asthma is a condition where bronchial hyperresponsiveness and airway inflammation lead to airflow obstruction. So basically our lungs will not be able to take in and exhale air as freely as they're supposed to. Asthma is the third leading cause of hospitalization and chronic illnesses among children under the age of 15. So it does affect a lot of children and their families. Uh, the cause of asthma could be allergy related. So these are just a few of the common uh, known allergies, pollen, mold, pet dander, um, and you know, of course, other things can trigger an allergic response. Non-allergic causes include anxiety, stress, and extreme temperature in the air, whether it's too cold or too hot. So all of these things can trigger an asthma attack. And as we can see here, among the non-allergic causes of asthma, emotional disturbance could be a trigger. So that's something that we would want to consider as well. And, you know, when we think about maybe a TV show we've seen or a movie that we've seen, um, we have seen this play out on the screen. You know, someone receives some very disturbing news and then they start having difficulty breathing and, you know, then sometimes they have to use uh, the inhalers. So asthma symptoms can be aggravated by the environment certain foods and food additives, and some chemicals from plants. So individuals with asthma are usually very aware of what triggers their symptoms, and they usually keep note of it because unless we can really resolve the underlying issue, um, the way that it would be managed is to be eliminating the exposure. And though we haven't figured out the mechanism exactly for this, um, but there have been epidemiological studies that have found a positive correlation between asthma and obesity. In other words, the higher our BMI, the more likely for us to have asthma. So this indicates that weight loss in these individuals may be helpful in improving their symptom or symptoms. During asthma attack and the hyper-responsiveness of the airway, uh, this leads to the smooth muscle of the wall of the airway contracting and the mucosa in the airway gets inflamed and endenomous. All of these could constrict the diameter of the airway. Therefore, we will be experiencing partial or total obstruction of the airway. So just imagine what happens with how little air we can inhale and exhale. Common symptoms include coughing, breathing difficulty, dyspnea, tight feeling in the chest. You know, that's something that everybody who has experienced this can relate to. And also there's a wheezing sound when they try to breathe. And because they're short of air, they try very hard and as they try it's almost like there's a wheezing or a whistling sound uh, that they make. So in fact this could be so severe that people around them or next to the person that's having the asthma attack can hear it. It can be very loud. And at the same time the respiration rate is increased so there's shallow rapid breathing. When people have asthma, they usually have recurrent episodes. So with all these symptoms that we just mentioned, they would be having over and over again. If the incident is not well controlled, the abnormal breathing activity could lead to disturbance in the pH value, causing the patient to have respiratory alkalosis or respiratory acidosis. And this is caused by the lungs capacity to exhale carbon dioxide being severely compromised during the asthma attack. 
To treat asthma, we want to have immediate dilation of the airway because that would you know, solve the problem right there. Although we're not removing the root etiology, at least we're alleviating the, alleviating the congestion temporarily, so making the diameter of that airway larger so the air can pass through. Oxygen therapy also helps. And bronchodilators are medicines commonly used to treat asthma. We do use steroid-based medications because we know steroids are very strong anti-inflammatory agents, and we can use that property to reduce the mucosa inflammation that we mentioned earlier. If there are known environmental triggers, patients should be aware of them and make an effort to avoid those triggers. Over time, they may have been trained to have a specific controlled breathing technique that would allow them to better manage the situation. As we mentioned earlier, uh, we have made a connection between asthma and obesity. The mechanism behind this connection is unclear, but the connection is there. Interestingly, it seems that people who have uh, breastfed have less risk to develop asthma later in life. So therefore, this is another benefit of breastfeeding. Also, studies indicate that increases in omega-3 fatty acids actually helps with the managing of asthma because we know omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids are both essential fatty acids. However, after they are metabolized in our system, the metabolites of the omega-3 fatty acids usually have an anti-inflammatory effect, whereas those metabolites from the omega-6 fatty acids are usually pro-inflammatory. This is why if we recall the general intake guideline, we not only specify how much omega-6 and how much omega-3 we should be taking in, but also we need to maintain a proper ratio between these two categories of nutrients. So asthma is a disease where inflammation is involved. And if we have disproportionately high amount of omega-6 intake, that would exacerbate the inflammation status. So this is why we would want to increase our intake of omega-3 fatty acids to interfere with the omega-6 then through this mechanism, we would hopefully be reducing our inflammatory status. Also, among all the antioxidants that are helpful with managing asthma, vitamin C has the strongest association. And we already mentioned earlier that antioxidants in general are health, helpful for pulmonary health. As far as nutrition therapy is concerned, we have to help the patient remove known triggers. So if there are any food allergies or you know, allergies to other maybe airborne particles, then we wanna make sure that the patient are not exposed to those stimuli. And since a lot of asthma patients take many medications either during an acute attack or for long-term maintenance. We need to be aware of these medications and if they have any nutritional side effects. Overall, we want to encourage patients to have a nutritionally adequate diet a, that's very well balanced with adequate amount of energy and protein. So until the relationship between diet and asthma are better understood, we should also promote weight control. Remember, we did find that obesity is positively cor correlated to asthma, and also one of the things we would want to continue to do is encourage breastfeeding because that is also associated with decreased asthma risk.